Hello YouTube, Pershik Brit here and welcome to my Fanson special assignment Saturday vlog. It's come weekend! Yay! Right, I'm here, everything's packed and unloaded, I'm in my room, got everything sorted, all my costumes are done. What am I doing? Oh yeah! Better go pick up the tickets. End of September, the beginning of October, there was a fan run convention by the group Fanderson, and they did a special convention called Special Assignment because it was the official 50th anniversary of Captain Scarlet and the Mr. Arms. And of course, convention stuff entailed. I'm going to do this a little bit differently. I won't be talking over most of this. So, please enjoy. Our facsimiles, if you like, we'd not seen them. Not, not our physical ones, but our vocal ones. We'd not seen them at all. And we all wished in Kathy Scarlet that we had actually seen the puppets before we started. Because I don't know why, it shouldn't, doesn't really make a difference to the voice, but I think it's, there's something that goes on in the relationship between you and the puppet, you know, and, and, and the voice that you give it. And we, we only saw our puppets and afterwards when we put, put it down, put, put the, the track down. But the difference was that, um, I mean, I've told this story so many times, if you've heard it, you can leave the room now. Yeah, I go back to prehistory. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I met Jerry on a, a rather ropey television series called Martin Kane, and um, I'd never met him before, and he happened to be directing, because he was uh, an editor, you know, he's in the cutting room when he started. And we just got talking in between takes, and Jerry said he's hoping to go and make children's programs, and. And I said, well, I'm not bad on accents. I, I lie easily, you see. And about six months later, I got a call from Jerry, and I found myself in Four Feather Falls. It was, uh, the first yes. series I was in with Ken Connor mm -hmm. and uh, Denise Breyer. And, and who was I? <laughs> Jerry thought that the uh, my name was Russell Corrigan. How about that for a movie very name? Good name. Anyway, <coughs> I, I was a very aggressive New York punk, and uh, I asking again. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Jerry uh, thought that that voice might fit in uh, in Thunderbirds, and especially to Scott Tracy. Well, I didn't know about this at that time. group called the Three Juices. Oh, go on, have a go now. <laughs> <laughs> what See. kind of fool am I? Well done. Well done. <laughs>
wanted to. We, we always do as aesthetic work. So we did all that on the main crack in a very short space of time. Mm -hmm. And David's replicas are so close to the originals. They're amazing. You know, the Overland in particular. Yeah. You know, the attention to detail. Yeah. Um, so so were Van Dyer uh, sort of official? Uh, they were well, photographed. They were rip off because you got Matchbox did got five separate yeah. figures and Bandai did exactly the same. Yeah. The only difference being the sashes. Right. I, I seem to remember that we. I started in September '82, and by January '83 we were photographing everything on one of the stages for the toys, all the elevations. Mm -hmm. But that was in their pristine state. Before we actually started filming, mm. so, they, so, the, so the toys that came out were all pristine yeah. toys. Yeah. Yeah. That's the way it is. It's led by merchandising and yeah. finance. It does change people's views. I know one of the series, that, or fledgling series that I was in, like, involved in, in after the Anderson years, we took a load of drawings and things up to Pinewood and had a meeting with toy manufacturers, mm. potential toy manufacturers. And we showed them all the drawings, and you could tell there was a temperature in the room which wasn't welcoming, you know. It, it wasn't going well. But we had a sort of ace up our sleeve, and we suddenly said, would you like to see the models? <laughs> and we just opened up a door, and there were all the models of the major craft sitting on the table, and instantly there was a, ooh. They couldn't read it off the page, I don't think. They couldn't, get the, they couldn't get the potential. But as soon as they saw a three-dimensional thing, and they could walk around, they could pick it up, they could examine it, and they were all finished models, yeah. dirted down, everything yeah. was ready to go. Um, and that sort of changed their mind. So yeah. we got them interested in them, yeah. because the photography folded up anyway, so yeah. they never got anywhere. But still, yeah. Uh, yeah. trying to chop it. Before your time, then. Mm. <laughs> I think this is on cabs. Cabs. <laughs> I wasn't, I wasn't cabs. Oh, were you? Yeah. You go back further than I thought you did. <laughs> I might have to think so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How much involvement did Joey and Sylvia have in the sort of final design of the, the ships? No, no, that was strictly down to Derek himself. Yeah, Derek. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, the only the only time that Jerry really ever got to see anything is if Derek felt it was worth showing it. Um, I was asked by Derek if I would do drawings virtually that size for the whole of zero x side, top, half, top, half, bottom, front and back elevation. Um, and I did it all and I put all the panel lines in and I shaded it and all the rest of it on a huge piece of cardboard um, and I know Derek took it in for Jerry to see. <laughs>
thing, you know, the purple wigs and the eyelashes and, and the costumes. And the costumes. They were all rather um, splendid when you lived in the 60s. It was like a dream, you know, of the future. Um, I think we, you know, it was kind of, oh, and they've got purple eyelashes as yes. well. All very new stuff. Yeah. Yeah, everybody. I was in the hairdressers the other day and somebody was having their hair painted purple. Yes. And I'm kind of, it, it is, we're living in that time, past that time now. bra and I got a little vest thing they had you know and I've just been told by somebody that when these photos have been reproduced some, a lot of people lightened the photos and so the whole thing has become it's like being, you know, the work. a bit strange. <laughs> and so it, it, it wasn't like that at all. It didn't feel like it because and the men were wearing them as well. Yeah. <laughs> and, so it wasn't naughty at all. But no, I think it was a little black and white television, so it was a bit of, oh, is she or isn't she? Is she? Oh, yes, really? Oh, we blew yeah. away. No, we, none of that. No, 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 no. I just thought she was. But how did that practically? I mean, because, I mean, you, you've been, you have trousers. I guess there's, there's a thing with science fiction costumes where, yes. oh, no, I need to go to the loo, I need to give an hour's that, notice. That's very true. <laughs> I think everything was all in one as well. Yeah. Yes, yes, so you just. <laughs> yeah. so, Worked your day out. So was that a problem with uh, with the Shadow HQ costume? Because it's like a grey, it's like a light grey jumpsuit. Yeah. Yes. Um, well, no, not really. I mean, you kind of you work around it. Yes. Yeah. 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 Obviously, with the coffee breaks and stuff. But, um, no, I I think um, I wear jumpsuits all the time now. So it's a kind of yeah. You know, but in those days, it was quite. Um, Innovative yes. yeah. and, um, and quite shocking. <laughs> anniversary of Captain Scar and the Mistrons, but right now we're going to be celebrating the 12th anniversary of its younger brother. So without further ado, can I introduce three very important members of the new Captain Scarlet team? Wayne Forrester, the voice of Captain Scarlet. <laughs> Mark Woolard, director of several episodes. Dominic Lavery, concept designer and director.
kind of, these seven years training me to do illustration, painting, stuff like that. And I used to do book covers, video covers, portraits, uh, chickens, I used to paint chickens. That's a very strange story. Um, I just had uh, Terry Adlin talking about chickens, so it's really? a running theme, yes. <laughs> okay. uh, and uh, I always wanted to get into working in movies. ourselves. We're here because uh, it, for, for the appreciation of Jerry, who obviously died, but we the, the whole, whole idea of you guys and fans and keeping the you know the story going with Jerry's shows and so on is, is the reason why we turn up because we effectively owe our careers to Jerry to some level of order. Responsibility to you know to get this right. This, this was going to be a definitive you know TV series, Cap Captain Scarlet, up to date. So you know we felt we've, you know, we we felt a huge responsibility to get it right. And um, these guys were brilliant in explaining how yeah, they we how were, they. We were brilliant. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I hope you really enjoyed that video and this uh, a little bit different to how I usually do these vlogs. If you did like it then tell me what you thought, leave a comment down below or if you were there then tell me what you liked about the Saturday and of course if you liked the video then maybe hit that like button. If you would like to help me maybe promote this channel a little bit more then please hit that share button and guys if you want to keep up to date and see more videos then please hit that subscribe button. I'll leave you with a little sneak peek for Sunday. But until then, thank you very much, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye, YouTube.